Welcome everybody. In this video I'm going to show you how to swap out eyes or a head from one photo into another photo using Lightroom and Photoshop. I lost this sweet little cat a couple weeks ago to cancer so I wanted to print out and frame this little snapshot of her because I loved the way I loved how she would jump into the laundry basket and want to play every time I did the laundry. But if I click on the image here to zoom in you can see that the eyes are very much out of focus. And if I click and drag around, you can see that the focus is really towards the back. Now this is just a snapshot for my own personal use, so I don't really care that the rest of the head here is out of focus. But I want to have sharper eyes, since that's where my eyes are drawn to. If I click on this second image here, you can see that I have another one that does have sharper eyes. I don't like the composition as much, but I'm going to go ahead and borrow the eyes from it in Photoshop. Now before I go to Photoshop, I want to do a little bit of develop work here in Lightroom. I'm going to do that work to both images at once because the exposures are the same. So I'm going to click on the first image, shift click on the second to select the two, and I'm going to change here from sync to auto sync. When I'm in auto sync mode, every change I make here in the develop module affects all of the images I have selected. Now you can see in the histogram that the blacks are blocked up. I don't have any detail in the blacks. What I want to do is slide the black slider out to zero here to recover that detail. Lightroom was just too heavy handed in its default for this particular image. Now if I had taken these images into Photoshop, which would have meant converting the raw files into Photoshop files, at that point it would have become too late to recover the blacks. So it's important to do that, to do that work here with the raw file in Lightroom. Another thing that's important to set on the raw files is the white balance. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the temp slider up just a little bit just to warm it up a touch. And I'm also going to increase the exposure on these images. The images are too dark and I can see from the histogram here that I have plenty of room to increase the exposure without blowing out the highlights. So I'm going to go ahead and increase it. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point, but I want to get it in the ballpark. Now I'm going to go ahead and open these images into Photoshop but I want the two images to open up in one document. I'm going to right click in the image and I'm going to say edit in. But I'm not going to choose edit in Photoshop as I normally would with just one image. I'm going to choose open as layers in Photoshop. And it turns out that my Photoshop Camera Raw plugin is not quite as up to date as Lightroom because I haven't done the latest update. But I'm going to go ahead and say open anyway. You can see over here in the Layers panel that Photoshop is working to bring in the two images. Now if I turn the eyeball off on this top one, you can see that I have the one I'm going to take the eyes from underneath. Now I'm going to go ahead and rename these layers just for good practice. I'm going to double click on this file name here and I'm going to say Eyes. And then I'm going to double click on this one and I'll say Main Image. And now I'm going to click and drag the eyes layer up above the main image layer. Next, I'm going to get rid of most of the pixels on this layer because I really just need the eyes and a little bit of area around them. So I'm going to get my lasso tool with an L, it's also right here, and I'm going to click and drag just a rough circle around that area. Now I want to delete the opposite of this selection. So first I'm going to invert the selection by going up to Select, Inverse, and now I can hit the Delete key on my keyboard to get rid of those pixels. I'm going to now get rid of the marching ants by going to Select, Deselect. Now the next step of course is to start moving and transforming this layer to fit in with the underlying face. Before I do that, I'm actually going to convert this layer to a smart object. Now the idea here is that I'm going to transform this. I'm going to stretch it out to fit. But I may transform it once and then need to come back and transform it two or three or four or five times to get it to work perfectly. Without a smart object, I'm going to end up transforming the transformed object over and over again. I'm going to slowly degrade the quality of these pixels. The image is going to become fuzzy. If instead I convert this layer to a smart object, Photoshop embeds an original copy of these pixels inside of the layer so that if I change my mind on the transformation, I'm not transforming the transformed object. I'm always going back and transforming the original so I'm not progressively degrading the image. I'm going to go ahead and right click on the layer name here and I'm going to say convert to smart object. And smart objects have this little symbol here in the bottom right. Now I can get the move tool with a V. It's also this symbol right here. 
and I can click and drag this down, kind of li line it up a little bit, but I can't see the underlying eyes, so I, it's very hard for me to completely line this up. What I'm going to do is for this layer that I have selected, I'm going to reduce the opacity on it so that I can see through to the underlying layer. I'm clicking and dragging to the left on the word opacity. Now I can see both layers pretty well. I'm going to do Control or Command Plus to zoom in. Now I need to stretch and transform this. So I'm going to go up to Edit, Free Transform. So I'm going to click and drag inside the box here, not the center point. I'm going to move them a little bit more. And I'm going to twist them a little bit by clicking and dragging outside of the box corner. And of course they're not the right size here. So the next thing I'm going to do is make the whole thing bigger by clicking and dragging on a corner. And I can move them around a little bit here. But you can see that I've got to start stretching if this is going to fit. Now to stretch, I'm going to hold down the controller command key and I'm going to move just one corner at a time. Now as I do that, you can see that it's 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 getting there. There, I'm, I'm pretty close. Okay, now that I'm close, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to get rid of the bounding box and I'll turn the eyeball on and off on this top layer to see how far off I am. Really, it doesn't have to be perfect but I may want to do a little bit more work. So I'm going to go ahead and do Control or Command T or go to Edit Free Transform again. And this time, what I'm going to do is warp this layer a little bit. I'm going to right click inside the box here. I'm going to choose Warp. Now there's a lot I, can, I could say about warp, but I'm not going to go into it in a lot of depth. I'm going to click and drag in this right corner to kind of stretch that one out a little bit. And I think I'm going to grab this handle here at the top to kind of make her eyes a little bit fuller. Then I'm going to hit enter and I think I'm in pretty good shape here. Now the one thing I'm not satisfied with is the way this particular pupil angles off to the right rather than being straight up and down as in the underlying layer. So let me go back into warp and work on that. I'll right click and say warp and let's see what I can do. Yeah, if I just drag inside this square here I can line that up, maybe drag this one a little bit, and that should do it. I'll hit enter again, turn the eyeball on and off, and that's close enough for this example. Now, I've got the eyes lined up, but I have all of this extra edge that I need to get rid of. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a mask to this layer. With this layer selected, I'm going to click on this little circle inside of a square symbol to add what's called a layer mask. Wherever the mask is white, this layer is revealed, meaning you can see it on top of this other layer. And of course, the mask starts out completely white, so we can see everything from this eyes layer. As we start painting in black on this layer mask, we start to hide parts of this layer. So I'm going to get my brush tool here, B for brush, and I'm going to make sure that the foreground color is black here. If it wasn't, I could always click on this white to black default and then click the little double arrow to get black on top. And I'm going to right click inside the image, go with a soft brush, hardness of zero, but I'll make it a little bit bigger. You can also use your left and right bracket keys to control size of the brush. Frankly, that's what I do. And I'm going to start painting away what I want to hide. Now notice that over here on the layer mask I'm painting in black on the image but because this layer mask is selected that's where the black paint is going and that's saying don't show these pixels wherever I paint in black. So we're in fact now seeing less and less of this layer and really just the eyes. Now I can't see any obvious edges anymore a way to test this is to click this eyeball on and off and to see if that kind of reveals areas that you still need to get rid of. I think that's looking great. We're still at only 50% opacity on this top layer, so we're still seeing out of focus eyes underneath the in focus eyes. Let's take this up to 100% opacity so that we're only seeing the top layer sharper eyes. And I think we're in good shape here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here and turn this layer on and off 
and that's clearly an improvement. The next step is simply to save our Photoshop file. So I'll go to File, Save. No need to do a File, Save As. And then I'll go back to Lightroom. And here in, in the film strip, you'll see that I now have my Photoshop file. Because I fooled around with this example a couple times before, instead of edit.psd, it's called edit3.psd. Now at this point, I can continue to work on this image in Lightroom. I don't like this white around the edges, so I'll simply click on the Crop tool, crop that out, and I can work on exposure and contrast and saturation and all the rest from here. So this concludes the video on how to swap out eyes and heads using Lightroom and Photoshop.